Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makerere 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hanning Mutokiriza and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapaloka Guaro. You are welcome. David's inquiry at the Ark of God. David's inquiry at the Ark of God. First Chronicles chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, so, so Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. And verse 14, and inquired not of the Lord, therefore he slew him. He did what? And turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. So the sentence that was passed on to Saul for, for him to be Killed was because he never inquired of the Lord. So Saul went to a woman who had a familiar spirit. And when he went there, he said, I want to, uh, I, 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 I want to inquire what concerns me and my life. And, and so the lady said, who are you? But, but Saul had hidden himself because before Saul had killed all wizards and all those who had familiar spirits. So the lady said, okay, whom do you want me to call for you? From the dead, of course. Saul said, call me Prophet Samuel. Then the lady shouted. Then the lady shouted and said, I, I, I see like gods that are arising from the earth. That, you must be Saul. You must be King Saul. You are hiding your identity, but now I found you are King Saul. Because I said, gods, they are rising. Then this lady begins to speak like Prophet Samuel. Say, now why are you waking me out of my sleep? I used to tell you while, while I was still alive, and you refused to, to hear. Now why are you coming to me? And say, everything that I told you will come to pass. And actually you tomorrow, you and your sons tomorrow will join me. Praise the Lord. That familiar spirit, I, I, I think I've ever talked about it here, that this familiar spirit speaks scriptures. This familiar spirit speaks facts. I, I also told you this familiar spirit which a girl had during the days of Paul. When Paul landed into that area, Iconium, and he wanted to establish a ministry, the first day this girl came up and said, those are the servants of the Lord. Those ones, they serve the most high God. They teach us the way of salvation. And Paul knew from day one that that was a familiar spirit. And that girl used to bring riches to her master because she was a slave. Huh? A familiar spirit. Bless his own name. I said bless his own name. I said bless his own name. The, Paul had no... Paul was in a, a tight position because he had at the same time to establish a ministry. And then he didn't want this familiar spirit. You know what he did? He put on hold, casting out this demon spirit. Meanwhile, he establishes them. So every time they pass by, this guy would say, Those are the ones! Servants of the Most High God! They are the ones! Those ones are servants of the Most High God. And Paul would pass. And that took like a year and a half. So when Paul saw that the minister has been fully established, then one day he was passing by, he said, Thou foul spirit, come out of her! 
and the spirit left her. Then Paul, was, you remember he was beaten? She just, and he knew it. He knew once he cast it out, he'll be beaten. God killed Saul. He said, you're so stupid. How can you go to inquire from a familiar spirit? You ought to be dead. Now, you will not die in Jesus' name. Amen. But don't go back again. Can I hear your good amen? amen? So, is inquiring of the Lord so serious? The answer is, yes. God killed someone. God killed, there is a dead person who was killed by God for not inquiring from him. If inquiring is not serious, there you are. Is death serious? Praise the Holy Name. Whoever, the, whoever is taking this as lightly, all I'm saying is someone died for not inquiring from the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Holy Name. Proverbs 16, verse 25 says, talks about a way. Proverbs 16, 25 talks about a way. What, what does it? He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. I mean, as long as you're a man. There is always a way that seemeth right. As long as you are a man. He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are many ways of death. How, how can this be? At the beginning, it seems right. But at the end of it, there are many ways. It divides into so many ways which can easily lead you to death. So what am I going to do? That's why I need to inquire of the Lord which way to go. Because I can't go on my own. I'm a man. Aren't you a man? I mean man, as in the creation. Go with me to Psalm, look at Psalm 37. Awesome, 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 awesome. There are some people here who think, well, Pastor, I can just do it on my own. I don't need any direction from anywhere. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23. See that. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. No good man anywhere orders his own steps. Or her own steps. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Woo, I wish I had a good Amen. So if you claim to be good, we shall know whether your feet are ordered by the Lord. Amen? Amen? If you are good as you claim, then we shall know that your steps are ordered by the Lord. We shall know. Every good man, every good woman, their steps are ordered by... They, their steps are not ordered by circumstances. Bless his holy name. I said bless his holy name. Amen. I said bless his holy name. I said, bless his own name again. Amen. Verse 24, he said, though he fall. <laughs> so even when it is the Lord who has ordered yourself, you can fall. Oh, amen. Bless his own name. Amen. But somebody it appears like it was the Lord. So I'm saying, it's okay. It's okay. You can as well fall even when the Lord is ordering your steps. But, 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 but. He said, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. You shall rise again. You shall rise again. I'm saying you shall rise again. Amen. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. And the said, I good amen. amen. So as long as he's ordering your steps, he will also hold you with his hand. And though you fall, you will not be utterly cast down. You shall rise again. Amen. I wish I had a good amen. amen. I wish I had a good amen again. Amen. So what are these scriptures telling us? That we, we can't make it on our own. We can't, as long as we're a man. As long as you're a man, there are many ways which appear right. By the end of it all, they divide up into so many ways of death. So if you want to leave, if you want to leave, if you want to leave, then you have to inquire with the Lord which way to take. Amen. Which way to take. And I'm going to show you in scriptures some things which appear so obvious. There's some of us things we take for granted. Oh, of course, this one, of course, the Lord would have told me. But did you, the question is, did you inquire from him? Praise the Holy Name. 
I said praise his holy name. So David, we are talking about David. David knew why Saul was killed by God. David knew why Saul was killed by God. And if you were David, what would you do? <laughs> Knowing that you must have been killed because he never inquired of the Lord, what would you do? You ought to inquire of the Lord. You must inquire if you want to survive. The question is, did David survive? Yes. yes. He survived unto old, a very old age. Well, <laughs> at 70. He was a very old man. Without heat. And when a man grows old to the point that he can no longer produce, generate heat, then you know that's real old age. So he survived. So he learned the secret. That if I'm survive, I may not be as good as Saul, but if I'm survive, I have to inquire of the Lord. Praise Holy Name. Yeah. That's why he labored, did all he could in all his, with all his, with all his effort to bring the ark of God to the place which he prepared for it. Why? So he may inquire at the Lord. But I want to show you that even before the ark came to the place which he had prepared for it, David was already inquiring of the Lord. Bless his holy name. Amen. In 2 Samuel, that's where they tell us, that's when they tell us uh, that David brought the ark, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 17. Let's watch there quickly and then go to another scripture. Here, so he said, and they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord, of course. He was so happy, don't you think so? And as soon as David had made an end of, of an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. What a happy man! Praise the holy name. He now had the ark of God permanently placed near him. Now, but I want to show you that even before the ark of God came, David was always inquiring of the Lord. So David was not after the ark. David was after the Lord of the ark. So he was always inquiring. Let me go with me to 1 Samuel. Now, he brought the ark of God in 2 Samuel, right? So in 1 Samuel, the ark is not there, obviously. Obviously, the ark is not there. 1 Samuel chapter 23. I want to show you something here. Really good. First Samuel chapter 23 and verse 1. He said, Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kayla. Kayla is part of Israel. Amen. And they robbed the threshing floors. And, and by the way, by this time, David was, uh, was running away from Saul. And kind of living a, a guerrilla lifestyle. He was a renegade, you can say. Praise the Lord. So then they, then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kayla, and they robbed the threshing floor. Therefore David did what? Have you seen that? Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines, and save Kayla. Look at the next verse. And David's men. So David was telling them, Let's go. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines that so, so close to Saul. Are you seeing that? Who are these who are so afraid? David's men. Verse 4. What did he do? He again went to the Lord. Look at that. So he didn't stand there and say, I, I was with the Lord and I inquired and he told me we should go. So let's go. No, David went back to the Lord. Then David inquired of the Lord. Yet again. Would you? Yes. Would you? Yes. Are you sure you would? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise. Go down to Keilah for I will deliver the Philistines in that hand. Now, some of us obviously will say, now, if I want the Lord and inquire and he said, go, if I go back, he'll just keep quiet. No, no, 
he will speak again. If he's the one who spoke before, he will speak again. And if he's the one who spoke before, he will speak again and again and again and again. Can I hear you good amen? Amen. God is not shrouded somewhere in a mystery. He's Lord. He's in heaven. Can I hear you good amen? amen? And you can go and inquire from him. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Amen. No wonder you are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. So David inquired yet again. Then they went with his men and they fought. Verse 5 says, So David and his men went to Caleb and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Caleb. On the outside, we see a brave David going to attack the Philistines. But on the inside, this man is so weak, he has only to depend on inquiry from the Lord. I wish I had a better amen. amen. God is not calling any of us here to begin posing as great. God is not calling any of us here to begin posing as great. We need him. Amen. We need him. Go with me to chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 7. And David said to Abiathar, now I'm going to show you a secret here. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech his son. Now this was Aaron's lineage. This, this was a priest. I pray thee bring me hither the effort. And Abiathar brought thither the effort to David. And David did what? Inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this true? Do you know what an effort is? An effort is a priestly garment. So David said to the priest, please, please bring me the priestly garment that I may inquire at the Lord. What kind of faith is that? That even with a priestly garment, David could inquire of the Lord and get to know his will. With just a priestly garment. Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> Praise all day. You know, some of us want to be in a service which is really great. People are falling over themselves and they are shrieking and shouting. Then someone said, Yeah, the presence of the Lord is in this. The presence of the Lord is in Well, David said, Bring me that priestly garment. I want to hear from the Lord. Then he inquired of the Lord. Don't forget that this is when the, the, the Amalekites came and attacked Ziklag. When David and his men had gone with the Philistines to fight Saul. Then they reached there, then the, the Philistine says, that David is the one who killed Goliath. You remember that, that guy, he killed the guy. Now he's together with us. When Saul comes, he'll join him and fight us. You know, tell him to go back. So David comes back and fights Zeke like bands. All property taken, everything, children, women, everything taken. So now he, now, would it be you to inquire of the Lord, Lord should I go and rescue my wife? Really? In the first place, she is your wife. Just go when you don't need to ask the will of God. But David inquired of He never took anything for granted. Lord, should I go? <laughs> and what if the Lord said no? <laughs> Bless the <Lord>, name. <laughs> all his promises, you, you, you guys are, all his promises are yes and amen. amen. But you still need to inquire from him. Amen. I said amen again. Amen. And David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after, after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. And everyone shouted a good amen. amen. Even something that appears so obvious. His children have been taken, his wife, his property, together with the 600 men, all everything has been taken. Obviously, they have to pursue them. But David inquired of the Lord first. So we must discover a secret here. What is it about inquiring of the Lord? What is it? There has to be a secret. And every time he's inquiring, the Lord is speaking to him. The Lord is answering him. Bless the name of Jesus. I said bless the name of Jesus. And let the show show this. Now go with me to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 5. From 18, it says, The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David did what? Really? Do you have to help that when the enemy is there? 
Don't you just go and attack him? And David inquired of the Lord, said, shall I go up to the Philistines? God would have told him, that's obvious, David. Oh, you're just a coward. No. Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said, oh, David, go up for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Inquiring of the Lord. And David came to Baal Perazim and David smote them there and said, the Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. In other words, David inquiring of the Lord was actually inviting him into his battles. David inquiring of the Lord actually was inviting him into his battles. Look at it. Now he said, look, the Lord has broken forth over my enemies, upon my enemies. He says, verse 1 says, and there they left their images. And David and his men burnt them. You shall burn all of them in Jesus' name. I'm saying you shall burn all of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 22. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. What's wrong with these Philistines? Isn't this the same one which we read about in verse 18? The same one. They, they, they came again, spread themselves again in the valley of Rephaim. But this time around, I, if I were David, I will just go and hit them. Amen. Because when I inquired the first time, the Lord said, go. So now the same enemies have come back in the same place and I'm the same one fighting them. Amen? Or just go, bless his holy name. God's will does not change, does it? Hey. What does the verse say? And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, you shall not go up, but fetch a compass behind them. What is happening here? This is military strategy, yes. which David had no idea about. All David knew was to go and attack up front. Now God tells him, no, 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 don't go up front. Go behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And then he said, verse 24, and let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestow thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. So why was David inquiring of the Lord? Because he wanted him to go and fight for him. Why was David inquiring of the Lord? Why are you in this man? Why are you going to inquire of the Lord? Because you want God to get involved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. You see the military strategy? Even God tells him, now, when you, when, when, when you get behind them, stand and wait to hear the sound <laughs> up in the mountain, in the trees. You'll hear a sound in the trees. Once you hear that sound in the trees, you know the Lord has gone ahead of you. Go and attack them from behind. So while these other guys who are here with the swords and everything, getting ready to smite them anytime he shows up, they had swords from behind. <laughs> and who did all that? the Lord. Why? Because David inquire of the Lord. Some of you listen to me. Some of you are too obvious for the devil to kill. Too too obvious. You are so in the open that it's only by the grace of God that you are alive. Begin to inquire of the Lord to give you the strategy of how to go about it. Amen. Can I hear you loudest say amen again? We cannot do it on our own. We need to inquire of the Lord. Can I hear you good amen again? No. You are not just... This is not about calculations. It's not about calculations. It's not about weighing the situations and... Begin to inquire of the Lord. You're not on your own. You, you don't know what he has in plan for you. Bless his holy name. You don't know how, how strong that enemy is. By the way, David was killing physical people. We are dealing with the spirits we don't see with our eyes. And some of you just go home and you eat your food and you belch and you say amen. We are dealing with spirits which we don't see with our eyes. These spirits have their schemes against us. Bless his holy name. Our enemy is, is not in any way compared to the enemy that David had. For David, he used to kill people. I mean, you kill him, he's dead and he's gone. Never come back again. We are dealing with spirits. 
But some of us appear as if we are. Well, I'll figure it out. I'll somehow find a way. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. What, what, what do you mean by keep, keeping your fingers crossed? Bless the name of Jesus. I said bless the name of Jesus. Listen, you're not on your own. You are not on your own. That's why you need to keep in constant communication with the Lord. Even about something that seems so obvious. Inquire of the Lord, I beg you. And you'll be surprised by what he'll tell you. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. I said bless the name of Jesus. Amen. I said bless the name of Jesus again. Amen. So it, it says, it says, verse 25, And David did so as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Giba until thou come to Gaza. And everyone said, I good amen. amen. From here now we can tell why David always had victory for every battle. Because it's not written anywhere that they had battle with their enemies and they fled. It's not written anywhere. Not even with his son when his son turned against him. Bless the name of Jesus. I said bless the name of Jesus. Well, I'm talking about sons and daughters as well. Amen. Even when his son turned against him, David emerged victorious. Now you know the secret. Even when he was standing before Goliath, so now you know, he was not standing on his own. Lord, should I go? That thing is so tall. But Lord, are you going to give him the strength? Will I bring that thing down? So how did he come up with an idea to pick stones? How? Bless his own name. How can you pick a stone to go and hit someone who is fully dressed in an armor? Doesn't make sense, does it? God must have told him what to do. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget that at the same time, David was watching Saul and how he was treating the Lord, not inquiring of him. And David said, I will never ever commit such a sin against the Lord. So all I'm saying is, can you imagine there are people sitting here, they trust pastors, they trust prophets, they trust apostles. They trust their words more than the word of the Lord. There are some of you, you know word by word of what the prophet said. And you know no single scripture that you can speak on your own. Now, go with me to John 14. He was looking for what? A permanent presence of God. John 14, 16. John 14, 16. He says... Jesus said, and I'll pray the Father, and shall give you another, who? Comforter, that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. I didn't hear you. Forever. I didn't hear you. Forever. So the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Pastor, what have you said? I've said Holy Ghost is with you for how long? You have a permanent presence of the ark of God. Amen. Amen. In the person of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Even the spirit of truth whom the world can receive because he sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwells where? With you and shall be where? In you. Look at verse 26. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now, these are not my words. You cannot burn that Bible, will you? <laughs> By the comfort which the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Won't you inquire from him? Won't you inquire from him? Teach you how many things? All. As all as how all? all. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Look at that. Holy Spirit, remind me. Holy Spirit, remind me. Holy Spirit, remind me. He shall bring to, to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. All, he shall bring to your remembrance all things. Can you imagine? I'm doing that paper. I read as much as I could. And now I'm at this question. I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, remind me. Holy Spirit, remind me. And he quickens your mind. It has not happened once or twice or three times. And it happens all the time. Can I hear your good amen? amen? 
to quicken your mind, to remind you things, because you have inquired of him. Amen. Even though things which appear to be so obvious, don't take anything for granted. The devil is in the details of obvious things. Finally, John 16, 13. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. We have a resident ark of God in our lives. In the person of the Holy Spirit. And you can inquire from him anytime you want. I wish I had a good amen. amen. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will do what? Guide you into all truth. When? After I inquire. Holy Spirit, help me here. Holy Spirit, show me the way. Some of you, you need to begin to learn those whispers of the Holy Spirit. Because most of believers, when you talk of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, all they are seeing are people with their hands raised and their eyes closed and they are shouting uncontrollably and some are falling and others are breaking the chairs. That's, that's what most of you know as the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not that power that breaks the seats and... He's a person. Bless his own name. So, he will guide you into what? All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall, shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. Not things in the past, because those ones you know. Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makere 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hanning, Mutokiriza, and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapoloka Gwaro. You are welcome.